Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And as well as all the other stuff I've been talking about in the last video, in the last stream we also went out looking for uh, ruins and exploring the universe. We played around with working out what happens when you run out of power and have memory cell systems active, and looking at all the problems we'd seen from brownouts. And of course we carried on working on the various supplies and things that we have in the base in order to keep everything running. So, let's take a bit of a look into what we found. I mentioned in the last video that we've been out to the Brunus system and we've been to a couple of the planets out here. Tristan wants to explore the pyramid on Trastorus. Um, I believe we have we now have a, a, an anchor set up in uh, Brunus orbit. And also, while we're out here, we noticed that Arendelle has this ruin on it. So we decided it'd be a good idea to investigate that, find out what we can see. And when we landed on the planet, we discovered this little this little um, base here. So a little castle thing with its own moat and a, a road leading up to it and lots of things. Very, very nice. And various defences in this as well. So we saw that we saw it had artillery and laser turrets and um, and so on. So it's fairly well defended. And as you can see, it's quite self-contained as well. It's got systems over here for building ammunition for the artillery guns and repair packs to keep anything uh, built up to properly. And there's a, there's a fuel tank over here, which I believe automatically refuels itself to um, to allow everything to carry on being built. So it's, it's slightly cheaty but it does keep the whole area powered and running and just ticking over nicely and we suspect that this might be a sort of a a sign of things to come perhaps in in the future there will be more random outposts like this that you find on planets and this just there's, there's only a, a couple of them that's been built so far and so we yeah we, we found this one we came in and we decided it would be a good idea to plunder it of all it's uh, all of it everything it has because well it's got a few valuable things in it like there's some um, there's some archospheres over here down here and just generally scattered around the place so it would it looked like it was worth going in and, and having a bit of a raid of the place and so we landed nearby, swept in, did some, did some, did a little bit of destruction and a bit of looting. Uh, Mike decided it'd be a good idea to go a bit over the top with the weaponry and, and use the lightning gun to destroy a load of chests in the outpost, which is a bit unfortunate because some of them might have contained archospheres, but we can't really tell anymore. But things mostly went fairly well until I stood a bit too close to one of the lasers and got zapped, so that was a bit of a shame. But in, in general, we managed to do fairly well at taking the place over. Which means it's now in a somewhat sorrier state. We have thoroughly looted it. We've taken all the things we actually remotely care about. Uh, things like steel and coal and stone, aren't copper ore and so on. We don't care. We've we just left that there. It's not. It's actually not worth the effort of picking it up and taking it back over to a uh, Norvis and, and sort of scattering it amongst all the buildings that require it. It's easier just to leave it here. Although to be fair, we could just have dumped it all in the disposal system and let that sort it out. But over here, as you can see, ooh, the biters are, are coming in now. Um, I wonder if they're going to find their way around and, and make it up across the moat over here and, and start actually attacking the uh, the base itself. Now that we've destroyed all its defences. In fact, I wonder if we'd left it. For, if we'd left the place for long enough, would it have done some certain battles with the biters? And I'm guessing it probably would. However, I think it. Would probably won fairly easily because it does have it did have the artillery and it had quite a lot of laser so I suspect it would probably have been okay and no these biters are just on their way past they seem to they're, they're going somewhere else so they aren't they don't care about the fortress over here because now there's nothing in there that enrages them it stopped producing pollution because there's no electricity available anymore because it looks like we've destroyed the generator over here and some of the other, and the other machines that were doing anything that, were, that could release any pollution so now it's just gone completely to sleep I suspect even if I look on the map we'll see that there is very little in fact, yeah, there is no pollution on this planet, possibly because we trimmed it quite enthusiastically. And so everything has gone quiet and the biters are unusually happy. So after looting this place thoroughly and having a bit of a look at it and going, ooh, isn't this nice? Oh, I noticed the tanks and the car have gone. I wonder if we destroyed those or if we stole them. Um, we then discovered there was another planet that had a ruin on it. And that was Crothurn. And this ruin was quite different to the other one. The other was a little sort of a little outpost of the sort you could imagine making in a slightly hostile area. It was self-contained, it had it had some tech in it, it had a few bits and pieces to steal, and it was it was there and it was running. This one feels much more like a a medieval castle that has been since been abandoned and we and we then came out to discover it and explore it. And it's it's quite artistically made. You've got sort of, you can feel you've got the, the various different rooms here. You've got a sort of a an open air an open sort of field area up here that could be for marshalling troops and same down here. These could be maybe some sort of barracks or buildings. You've got areas where there's furnaces inside buildings. So up here clearly this is the kitchen because we've got some fish waiting to be cooked and some iron ore waiting to be cooked as well. But we'll, uh, we'll skip over that. <laughs> um, or maybe these are dungeons because they've got so, quite such, such thick walls. Um, and the whole thing feels like it's actually a, a, a almost a sort of a real proper designed massive building. We've got some more living quarters down here as well with a bathing area and a little park thing and so on. Yeah, it's all very, ni all very nice and nicely put together. 
And in comparison to the other one, this feels like, well, it feels like one massive castle, as I was saying, but it also feels like a very, very, a much lower tech level, because there's no machinery in here. The most advanced things we've managed to spot are these stone furnaces and a few boxes scattered around that uh, <laughs> are described as an old chest, apparently. Yes, that does appear to be what that is. Uh, fair enough. Uh, so you, you, can see, you can see what I mean there. And we've got these ruins, which I think these might have been meant, these might meant, be meant to be ruined furnaces. They, they look very, very similar. Um, I haven't spent enough time staring at the, um, the remnants that you get when you destroy things, but I I suspect that's what those are. And so we swept in here, we had a bit of a look around. Interestingly, and uh, adding to the, oh well this is obviously a building um, type of feeling, we discovered that we could, whilst we could fly over these outer walls, the stone walls around here, once we tried or got inside, we weren't able to fly just straight through the middle of the building, so we had to do all this on foot. We were running around, actually running around in the building following corridors and stuff like that, which is a, a weird sensation when you've been playing space exploration for, for uh, several hundred hours, because you're used to being able to f just fly straight over the top of everything, uh, with the exception of spaceship walls, admittedly. But basically, you can norm you can normally just fly straight over the top of absolutely everything and not worry about the walls. But when we wanted to get in and loot some of these chests, we had to we had to find ways into into the rooms themselves. Uh, okay, long reach helped quite a lot with that, but we still had to navigate through the uh, the, the main castle building. So yeah, that was uh, that was quite interesting, and uh, it was nice nice to come out and see it and have a bit of an explore and look around. This one was much less dangerous than the other one, and I did not die out here. <laughs> In previous videos, I mentioned how uh, Talos was running a bit low on power, having having some issues. And so I've come out here and I've put in quite a lot more solar. It's a bit it's a bit of a mess out here because I didn't have as many solar panels as I w as I uh, planned for, and I didn't have as much scaffolding as I planned for. So there's a lot of oh you haven't been able to build this thing out here. But maybe I'll come out here and build up a bit more. However, at the moment I think things are probably okay. Let's have a as, as usual. Let's look over the last ten hours and let's have a look at what the uh, accumulators have been doing. And we can see there've been a couple of spikes an hour and a half ago. So that's about three hours ago in real time which is probably r quite early on in the previous stream. So I'm hopeful that this means that I've now sorted this problem out. I will need to keep an eye on the amount of power being used from accumulators here and perhaps put some actual accumulators in around here so I've got the, uh, so even when there isn't a spaceship here, I've got some sort of early warning system. That said, there is basically always spaceships here because there's one, two, three, four different ships that come to this area. And I was going to say, they all, yes, they do all have accumulators on them. So it's pretty likely that one of the four will be docked at any given time. I say four different ships that come to this area. There's about ten of these ones, but they come one at a time. So there are four, there, at least there are four different slots where we can put spaceships. And so there's a pretty good chance that we'll always have some accumulators available. So I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good way of keeping an eye on the problem. And the reason this is such a big deal, apart from the obvious, well, we want the factory to keep running, it's because we have a memory cell system running up here. And so as I was talking about uh, last week, we have a system up here that watches how many uh, meteor defense ammunition are put into the system here. So we, we're, we're letting them in when required, and then we're counting what comes in. So here you can see we're pulsing the signal through there, We are, and then we are controlling it. So whenever, when there's less than 200, that we're letting them through from there. And that's passed into this uh, combinator that's acting as a memory cell. You can see the cable going from the input to the output of it, and it's passing everything round and round and round. So we can pass in positive numbers to count up on here, and then negative numbers will count down. And so whenever, when this gets, when we've let 200 through, we'll stop with this, we'll count it up to, as you can see, 200 over there on the side and so this belt will stop running and that means we'll stop at 200 in there. We're doing the same thing as you can see with the uh, train batteries as well, so we're, except we're asking for 400 of those. And we're taking any numbers that come in from the signal receiver, we're multiplying them by minus one in here and then passing them in to subtract from the total. And so this means down on the ground we have a, a storage thing here to hold those 200 of each and when these belt controls allow any through they will then be passed through here and, and, the, and the signal will be sent up here to be counted down again. So in theory we are always keeping 400 batteries and 200 ammunition in here. However, things seem to have gone slightly funny here, which is a bit of a worry because I fixed it fairly recently. And for some reason, this memory cell thinks there are 400 batteries in the in the logistic system when they don't think there are. So if we follow this belt down here, there aren't well, there aren't going to be any along here. But then we have this inserter down here that will put um, train batteries into this train, and there aren't any in there at the moment. So there aren't any from that. And if we look where they're unloaded down here, well, they'll then be passed out into this uh, warehouse here. Um, I hope they haven't been passed down through here. Oh, they've been passed down this way because these filters are not set up correctly. I need to ha! I need to add to train batteries and meteor defense ammo onto here with a with. Um, no, hang on. Right, I need them to add them onto the blacklist here. However, they're already, already the blacklist is already full, which means I'm going to re need need to redesign this and come up with a way of getting this to only pass things that I wanted to pass through into this warehouse. Although I noticed the the 
system is only ticking over fairly slowly at the moment and passing things through occasionally. We have the blacklist set permanently along here, but we do have a, uh, a combinator here passing a signal into these inserters. So, uh, I'm not quite sure how this system is supposed to work. It clearly doesn't work and is going to need some um, some rejigging. I think in, previously it worked because it would pass through it would pass through everything except these four items. Now, because I've got a few extra items required up here, it is now spectacularly broken and is not going to work at all. We'll probably also get, yes, we've also got enriched vulcanite passed through down here, which is going to cause problems as well. I'm going to need to come over and tidy this thing up and start making this a positive pass through rather than a, a rather than a blacklisted one. So down here, you can see that we're watching uh, for things that we do want to pass through down here and in the specific numbers as well. And then we're passing them through into the into these in, set, to set the filters here. So we will pass through the things that are wanted in these boxes down here. This needs to be the same up here to, to pass through from this top warehouse into the other two. And then it should start to behave itself. But I'm going to need to do a bit of tidying up and taking things out of here that shouldn't be in here and yeah just a general a general a bit of fixing should we say and then hopefully the system will work nicely but at the moment it's completely broken all the batteries have been stolen and no wonder mike has been having some issues with the uh, train out in melancholia however this is a bit of a distraction and a takeaway from the actual problem with the that i was wanting to talk to you about which is if you set up a memory cell system here and then you have any problems with the power supply well the um the first thing that dies when power when power goes down is any signal transmitters and receivers so that means if you've got your um, memory cell um, adders and subtractors, for want of a better term, on different surfaces and you're using uh, signal receivers and transmitters to send those signals between them, if you have a brownout, then you end up not counting the, the items being taken out of the system and only counting the ones being put in. And that means that you don't realise they've been taken out and therefore you don't put extra ones in to compensate and therefore eventually the system will run out. And that's what happened and that is why there is a train that has run out of power out here on Melancholia. The batteries are all dead on it. Um, the train has stopped. The train will just sit in the station until, well, until, it's, until it gets fixed. And that, unfortunately, is going to have to be a manual fix. And probably because of my power issues over on Talos, and I am expect, accepting full responsibility for this, there seem to be, actually, there still seem to be quite a lot of batteries over here. But, may, but there may, may have been a bit of a shortage in the past before I gave it a nudge and sort of partially fixed it. And that is probably why the other train has run out of power. So, sorry about that, but I guess we're going to have to send someone out to Melancholia to actually fix that up manually, which is a bit unfortunate. However, with the additional solar I've put in over here, I'm now cautiously optimistic that this system will be okay, at least once I've gone off and fixed that um, inserter filter problem down on the ground that's taking all the batteries out and putting them in a box that we don't want them to be in. I did request quite a lot more solar panels over here before I came over, um, it, but it was taking a long, long time for them to arrive, and maybe I should have stolen some from a different ship, I'm not sure, but anyway, they weren't arriving quickly enough, which is part of the reason I came over anyway, because I thought I probably had just about enough. But over in Norbit, the production of these solar panels is still struggling quite a lot. And you can see that we don't have any in these red chests along here because we've, we've taken them all away. We've, we've, all, we've demanded them. We've taken them away to use them. And as, I say, as I've been saying before, a lot of those have been used for the dimensional anchors, which has put a massive drain on our solar panel supply. However, we've been trying to use them for other things as well. And the reason it's not working at the moment is because we're not, make, well, we're not making any red panels because we're not making any blue panels. We're not making any blue panels because we don't have any purple panels coming in along the, uh, along the belt here. If you're looking here, you can see it's, it's the purple, the advanced solar panel. That are, uh, that are missing, so we don't have any of those. And that's because down on Norvis, despite our uh, regular efforts of poking and improving the system every week, well, it, it, it stopped running again. What are you short of this time? We've run out of, oh, Im Imacite crystals. Okay, uh, that shouldn't particularly surprise me because we know from the last video that we have some big problems with Imacite at the moment. So I guess, yeah, once we've got the Imacite up and running again, we can start to make more solar panels. They can be brought down here, put into the train. Uh, there are a uh, a reasonable number. Actually, this train is basically full. Um, so the the back wagon is completely full. The front wagon is nearly full. It's only it's only uh, 35 short. So we could send the train off to take the solar panels away to, to be taken up into space and uh, and dealt with appropriately. And Tristan did do this during the last stream. He gave the train a nudge and sent it off. And that's why we were able to make at least some of the ones we needed. So as you'll remember, the train then brings them from here down to the uh, train swap over area. They'll be put into the appropriate train to take them up, to take them up into orbit. And then they can be made into more of the more advanced solar panels, allowing us to you know, carry on expanding and upgrading and building everything up to a bigger scale. Exactly the same problem, and therefore exactly the same solution, was also seen over in Big Rib, where we're also using a memory cell system because there's so many different things that we're transporting across from Big Rid over to Norbit. And so this has been implemented for a slightly different reason. Over in Tal Orbit, and take, to take, taking the meteor ammo and the batteries down to the ground, we're using a memory cell system there because I, I didn't want to have several thousand in the logistics system being sort of held up and passed through as uh, uh, just just filling up belts and it's wasting resources I guess. So I set up set up that system so I could only have a few hundred being passed. Through. Over on Big Rid, the problem is more that we have so many different things being passed through. 
you can't just fill the spaceship up with them in, in certain proportions because you'll never have the right amount being unloaded at the other end. It's all going to be a horrible mess. We need some sort of way of sending through the right amount of each one. And what? And there are there are various possible ways. You could use the system I was using for um, Stardust, where you request quite large numbers of everything, and all those things get put into the spaceship and brought over. The problem is it's it's a little bit inaccurate. You can end up with multiples of whatever you're ordering, which is why I have all these warehouses down here for storing sulfur. None of which don't have any in them. This is a little bit concerning. Yeah, we seem to run out of sulfur completely. That's a that's a worry, and again something that's going to need to be looked at. But it can lead to funny bit. As I say, it can lead to funny outcomes with having excesses of certain things. Especially if you have multiple ships flying back and forth. So Mark came up with a more elegant solution over here where he's keeping everything in a memory cell. So he knows exactly what is in the whole logistics system, including the storage over in Norbit. And it's counted in, counted out, and in theory should be perfect. So you always know exactly how much is in the system. So over here, for example, we're watching the, um, the, the Vitamal Ange Extract. We're saying we would like to have 20,000 of that in the system. And currently we believe we have 20,000 in the system. And so we aren't, aren't passing any through. Down here, you can see us producing vitalic epoxy and passing it straight through because we currently don't have enough in the system. We're again asking for 20,000, and we ha and we believe we have 19,000 in the system. So we can't try So we're trying to pass through another thousand or so of it as we as we gradually produce it. Here we've got another another slightly different case where we've got the um with the reagents trickling in, and this is just filling up the chest here. It's not being passed through because once again we believe we have the 20,000 we need, so we don't need to pass any more through. If a train comes and goes in Norbit and picks up a load of this uh, Vita stuff and takes it away to use somewhere else, you'll then suddenly see all of these start running, because that will mean a load of the, all of these um, products have been taken taken away, and so there is demand for all of them, so we can run, we'll can we then fill a load more up. And in theory, that means we'll fill the spaceship up, it'll fly over and it'll unload before we run out of anything over in Norbit. If we find that one of them is being a particularly, particularly problematic and we think we always have enough of it down here, but we're still running out of the other end, then we can come over here, we can tweak the numbers and say, actually, we don't want 10,000 bioscrubbers, we want 20,000, anything like that, and just increase the amount that's being taken. If, on the other hand, we come over here and we go, okay, well, the numbers are, are insufficient, but we don't have enough, we don't seem to have enough of it being made, like the vitalic epoxy. Well, as I say, we have, have 19,000 in the system, so we have a decent amount of that. But that, that would, could then be a sign that we need to make more vitalic epoxy. And then the train comes down, as you see here, it unloads all the, uh, all the ingredients, bits and pieces that are required to make all these vita everythings. And then we can load all the, well, it's mostly, it's mostly trash, if we're being honest, isn't it? This, this warehouse is mostly full of wood that we need to take away. So we'll, we'll fill the train up with that. And hopefully a little bit of some of the stuff we actually want will be passed through into it as well. And that can be taken over to, back over to Norbis in the spaceship. And we'll be able to use it over there for we'll provide to everything. Which is, at the moment, I think is mostly going to be making productivity modules. But I think it's also used a little bit for the biological side. And so over here in Big Red, we've had the similar sort of problems with the powered, uh, power supplies. Uh, if you look over the last 10 hours and turn on the uh, accumulator like that. You can see there were some spikes, granted these were quite a lot longer ago, that was a couple of streams ago, but there were some spikes of power being taken out of the accumulators, which means we had some power problems uh, with the system in general, and therefore we didn't have enough solar, and so we had the usual problem of um, various transmitters or receivers cutting out. Probably this it'd be this receiver here will have cut out when some of the signals were sent back from Norbit, saying, oh, we've used a load of these resources, so that didn't get counted over here, so we didn't count more of it in and therefore we were starting to run out. I suppose an alternative way to do this would be to keep the memory cell at the other end, but then you'd need to transmit from this end to that end and then transmit back again. And also, you then end up with overload instead of underload, which is probably harder to tidy up. So I think it's probably better to do it this way around. And so Mark spent a little bit of time making sure the power systems in Big Red were okay, making sure there was enough solar to keep everything running happily. And in order to get the count reset and accurate again, he was he had to pull out everything out of all of the, all three of these warehouses along here and move it into separate warehouses. So there were quite a few more of them down here. And the idea is you pull everything out of these. It goes into the it goes into these warehouses and it'll be counted into the system because it will go through these uh, belt sections here. And therefore you'll be able to start again from zero and count what you actually got and make sure that all of your numbers are correct. And so he's done that, and as, you, as you've seen, the system is now working quite nicely. There is a bit of an excess of, um, of the vitamin lounge core chunks, because we, we, we ended up with an enormous quantity of those. As you can see, there's almost an entire warehouse of them here, uh, and that's why we're not feeding them out. These are used as one, in one of the stages for making bioscience packs. They're one of the intermediates, just to be a little bit awkward. And so we do need to have a supply of these over here, but somehow something went a bit funny, and we've ended up with an extra. 10,000 10, more of them than we, than we really wanted. However, those are, well, actually, they're not, when, the system is not aware of those. I don't know how many of them we're asking for, but maybe we need to make sure there's always enough in here. Maybe we should, maybe we should have a, a thing on here that will pass through whenever there's less than 2,000 in this warehouse or something like that, just to gradually pull them out of this warehouse here instead of feeding more in along the, along the belt down here. Now, at the moment, we are watching for 3,000 of them, apparently, and we have 11,000. 
So we will need to get through another 8,000 from um, from Norbit before we'll start to feed any more in. So I think it's probably going to be okay. There's a reasonable chance we'll notice that. And we certainly won't end up with an overload because there's room, plenty of room for those up here. Um, but at some point, we, it would probably be quite nice to, uh, to try and empty this, this one. Probably just by putting a cable from this warehouse to here and saying, if there's ever less than mumble, mumble, mumble thousand of them in here, just pass some more in. Um, and, be, and that would then self-empty over time as we as we gradually, gradually use them up. They're not used in very large quantities though. It's somewhere over, over here in the um, in the biological science area. You can see we have a supply of the core chunks coming down here to be passed in onto another sushi system over here. But this one is a uh, this one is all local, so it's much much less likely to have problems. <laughs> uh, where the, where it'll then get, it gets passed around. You can see a bit of it on the spell. It gets passed around because it's being used for making the bioscience core. But it's not used in particularly large quantities. We get through one fragment for every eight bioscience pack fours we produce, and because we've got the massive amounts of productivity boosting going on in the labs down here at a plus 185 percent, so each science pack turns into almost three researchers. We're not getting through huge amounts of it up there, so it's going to take a very, very long time for us to get through that sort of 20,000 um, core chunks we have. That means something like 60,000 science packs, and we only need 40,000 for that mining product 14, which we may well not bother with, and we only need 5,000. For the, uh, for the spaceship victory endgame research, which we may or may not even bother doing, uh, because we're trying to go for a different victory anyway. So yeah, there's a lot in that box down there. I can't see us actually ever needing all of that, but at least the system is set up so that if we do churn through it all, some more will be needed. Mark says he has also updated the uh, Vita logistics system to brownout proof by adding another memory cell system in Norbit. Now I found the memory cell, here it is. I've got this doing some, some counting, um, certainly. I guess this is counting what's been taken out of the system and passing it through. Then here we've got that being turned into negative numbers and then transmitted over to here, where it's then fed in over here. I'm, I don't under entirely understand how this is going to work. We have, we have an additional memory cell down here, with, and that would explain why this has significantly larger items on it. Ah, I suspect I understand what he's doing. I think he's using two separate memory cell systems. So this, this memory cell here is counting out every single item that's been passed through into the spaceship, at least the ones we care about, we're not counting the junk. It's counting all of the Vita products that have been put into the spaceship. At the other end, he has another system that's counting all the Vita products that have been taken out of the spaceship. He's then keeping those as separate signals to uh, avoid any brownout problem. And then they're being brought over here and we're adding the two of them together before they're being passed into the cable coming up here. That makes sense and that explains why there was this um, combinator here that had some rather odd numbers on it that I didn't understand when I first glanced at it. So he's, yes, he's counting the number put in and the number taken out separately rather than keeping them on the same combinator. That makes a lot of sense. And it even means you won't get any hiccups of, of extra stuff being passed through if there is a brownout. Because if there is a brownout, then you, then the system will think, well, we've passed thousands and thousands more than we should have done through. So we're just going to say, well, we've put 50,000 uh, vitalic extract in, so we don't need to pass any more through because that only, only goes when there's less than 20,000. Um, but then when the power comes back again, the system at the other end will say, well, yes, okay, you may have put 50,000 in, but we've taken 40,000 out, so that means you need to put another 10,000 to get to work, and, and, and it will. So that's, that's actually, that's quite neat. Uh, yeah, keeping the two of them, the two counts separate means that you don't have to worry about any problems with transmission loss. That's quite neat. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, as long as we don't ever hit the map at the point where we, uh, we, where the numbers roll over because we've gone too high. But given that Factorio is capable of exploring literal billions, I think we should be okay there. <laughs> it also means you've got a nice indicator down here that tells you how much stuff, of every type of stuff, you've passed through since the system started working. So that's that's quite nice. It also makes me wonder how he got the numbers onto here for all the stuff he loaded in at the other end. Um, presumably it was passed through the transmitter and shenanigans on here with a, with with some, some, some extra cables that have now been removed. Because it does know about the 11,000 four chunks we've been sent over, even though those weren't done on this side. So, yeah, it, he's got the numbers onto here anyway. So that seems, seems to be working really well. That's that's a really good idea. And, I've, and um, I'm slightly tempted to copy it for Telorbis, but I probably won't bother because I don't think we're going to be using it for long enough to matter. <laughs> Back over on Talos, I made a start on expanding the uh, the pulverization area over here. So this is this is the area that's taking all the nacotite that comes to the teleport chest from Melancholia, and then smashes it down and turns it into the crushed nacotite that can then be passed off to the process. Now at the moment we don't have a great deal coming through, but as I've been saying, that's my fault for not sending Mike the train batteries he needs, and therefore causing one of his trains to run out of power and block everything up. So he's not bringing the ore over. However, he is still going to need to expand it further for the uh, for the rate that we're now trying to use stuff at. But you can see that we've now got about twice as much um, crash pulverization as we had before. Some of these machines don't have all the modules they need yet, but uh, we'll we'll work on that. We'll uh, we'll get them moduled up as, as as and when we can. And so this system is now capable of dealing with the full flow that can come through from this uh, from this teleport chain. So once we're filling this up at the rate we want to fill it up at, 
we will have seven solid belts coming in, seven solid belts coming out, and that will keep all of these machines reasonably happy. We'll have a good healthy supply of Crefnacrium coming through here, and we can feed that into the supply over here, and all of that should get used. Um, at the moment, there seems to be some minor hiccups. We Do we have a... We have, oh yeah, we seem to be running out of it, and this might be because we seem to have run out of sulfur, or it might just be because we're waiting for this train coming. I was going to say, it might be because we've run out of sulfur over in um, Stardust, so that's something else I'm going to need to look at. But at the moment, generally, overall, this system is basically working on this planet. We just need to keep an eye on everything on all the places of the supply. I've also finally put in the uh, splitter over here that is sending the necrotite one way and will send any dead batteries to come through the other way. They can then be passed down onto this belt here, which will hopefully flow at some point and will allow us to then uh, keep the, all, all the train systems running. At least that's the plan. Over on Norvis, Tristan's made some minor changes to the, uh, the Graphomatron. He's put enriched Vulcanite on it, which we apparently don't have any of, so there's clearly a problem with the cabling there, because I'm pretty sure we had a warehouse full of that uh, last time I looked. And he's put Naquium Crystals on as well, because that's another important resource. And as you can see, we have plenty of those, so that's nice. We're a little bit low on Naquium, so we'll need to um, make, make sure that carries on flowing. And that's a bit odd, so I'm fairly sure when we were looking at Talos a moment ago, yeah, the Naquium is not flowing. So there's some... some um, we're obviously not kept, something isn't counting nicely there, we'll have to take a look into that one and find out why that's not being fed through, given we're apparently shortening. And looking up here, we we think we've got 1900 in there and we're passing through whenever we have less than zero. So there's, there's something going wrong there, but that'll need to take a look at. And so we can keep an eye on those resources as well and try and tell them we're short of. Actually, it looks like we're short of Vulcanite as well. Maybe there is an actual problem. Yeah, we don't have an enormous amount of Vulcanite up here and we definitely have a shortage of enriched Vulcanite. That's concerning, because I, I was under the impression that um, Agnea was basically working pretty well. We don't have a ship coming over from there at the moment. Down here we are, oh, oh, we are not producing things at the rate I would expect us to be. What has happened over here? Oh dear, this is like we've had a spectacular train jam, and everything has broken. Yeah, look, this, this seems to be the source of the train jam. So we've got this train here trying to go, that's trying to get straight through. I don't know why it's not allowed to go through, because... Okay, that train's trying to go through as well, but this one should be able to trundle through, because there's nothing in its way. This one is trying to whip around there as well. I'm a bit puzzled by the signalling. We've got we've got chain signals all the way around here, which means this one is waiting because... Well, this one is waiting because there's a train in its way over here that can't go, because... Uh, because this one can't go, because this one can't go, because this one can't go, because this one isn't going. But this one can go. There's plenty of room down here for this train to head through, so I don't know why this has caused problems. Um... I guess I can fix those problems by removing that and then say, actually, I didn't want to do that. Oh, I'll do it there as well. And the train will head off. But it's a bit concerning that that's happened. And then we're going to get exactly the same problem again. But all the trains will shuffle forwards a little bit, which will alleviate the problem to an extent. But yeah, I, that doesn't go with what my understanding of chain signals. I thought if you got to a chain signal, if your, if your route through was full, which it is here, you're, you were allowed to... Oh, no, there's a signal missing here. That's the problem. So uh, this, this turnaroundy thing doesn't, sh probably shouldn't be, straight up shouldn't be there. Um, if we get rid of that, then the train should all be happy again. So that, let's fix that next time. Um, so yeah, because there wasn't a signal in the middle of here, that train that was wanted to come through here couldn't go into, into this block, because all of this was the same block, because there was a train parked down here. So there's the problem, that, but that's easy enough to fix. Rip out all the rail. I don't think that could cause any problems. The train, if, if necessary, the trains can take a longer route. I don't care. But there we go. That's fixed that nicely. The train jam is unjammed. So now we can have all the trains pulling into the station down here. We've got a, we'll have a nice steady flow of the Vulcanite all coming in once again. At least once all the trains get to their destinations. And then the system should kick back into gear. And we'll get an absolute flood of stuff flowing through. And things should start to behave themselves again. Oh no, we've got more jam over here. Oh, no, actually, this isn't, no, this isn't a jam. This is just heavy congestion. There are too many trains trying to go to a small area. Uh, actually, why are you stopped? You're stopped because you're trying to go into down here. You can't go anywhere earlier because you're jammed the right. Okay, there we go. It's, yeah, it is It is self-clearing. It's just a bit of a mess and a bit unfortunate that we managed to get into that step. <laughs> ah, the joy of trains. At least when I found the problem, it was it was an easy one to fix and it was clearly my fault. I mean, I'd, I'd just done something dumb rather than having any, a, a problem with my understanding of how signals work. So, yeah. <laughs> Oops. So I'm glad I happened to look at the graph. Um, as previously, none of the we don't care about any bit of a shortage of green um, belts being made at the moment. Um, that's probably due to the shortages of the MSI we've been talking about before. Uh, the advanced science I'm still not reading, so I still haven't put that onto the graph because I'm apparently lazy. In Ritual Vulcanite, we've, we've worked out why there's a problem there, 
Astro Wall Mass of Strength. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Deep Space Science Catalog Wall Mass. Funny one to do for short time as well. Three and four aren't put onto the graph, so that, that's fine. Vulcanite we've talked about. Holmium, I'm surprised that hasn't caught up yet. I thought that was doing pretty well. Uh, we're still short on some of the bios, but we've seen that system flowing quite nicely. But the ship will hopefully come over fairly soon. And in a site we've talked about. So all, most of this seems to be okay. And looking up in space at the Astro 1, well, they are they're tricking through, as are the Astro 3. Those are queuing up on the belt there. But the Astro 1, we do seem to be short of. Why are we so short of Astro 1? Here we go, Astro 1. Uh, okay, so we're short of about the, these particular... Well, actually, we're short of all of the data cards coming through here. Yes, that's because a, couple, a week or two ago, I sped up how quickly we were making all these cards in order to make these ones fast. So all of our... Um, all of our production of all of the early data cards has now been swallowed up by making the astrometric cards. Those are going down this belt over here, which is still seems to be unsatiable. We've still got massive shortages of that. And so that means we aren't doing the, um, the, the telescope stuff fast enough. So this is going to be a case of, well, I can come along here, I can fill these up with speed modules, or I can pull some of the scopes out and put beacons in to make all of this run faster. And that would be lovely. Except that then we start to have shortages coming on these belts. Because these these were, at least previously, these belts were running more or less flat out. And they're going, yeah, they're going fairly quick. I could upgrade these to deep space belts. That might be the easiest way to double the throughput of everything. Um, and then have, I guess, twice as many machines making them. All speed module will be these machines up here. Uh, that, could, that could do. So yes, I think the upgrade over here is going to be to speed module all of these machines. Or perhaps put in beacons. How, how much coverage do I get from a beacon? Before, yeah, before, if I lose some of my yellow... Uh, telescopes. I can put beacons in along here and get both the telescopes and the um, and the machines up here that are making the making the break. And that would allow us to go much much faster. Do I want to lose the yellow frames? The yellow frames. They all seem to be. We all we seem to be short of all of them. Although the yellow frames are the least short looking over here, and uh, but they are the shortest down here. So I don't know. Boosting the speed up here though will make a big difference and will help hopefully sort this problem out. But I will need to uh, probably upgrade all of these input belts as well. Although looking at this. The, the input belts along the middle here don't, certainly aren't running flat out, so I reckon we could run these a lot faster before we had any sort of problem. We might need to upgrade the belts along here, though, so, uh, just bringing, these, bringing the uh, frames out along here. To get the Deep Space Science 1 seems to be being made steadily. All the machines are working, they've got all their inputs. Maybe we don't. Maybe we need more machines making them. Maybe we just had a bit of a shortage of some of the ingredients beforehand because we had Naquium problems or Emersite problems or something like that. Looking up here, we do seem, these aren't running very quickly. Are you an Emersite problem? Yes, you're also an Immersite problem. So if we can fix the Immersite, then I suspect everything will start being absolutely fine. It's just until we do that, we have some severe shortages of lots of the bits and pieces required for pretty much everything. So um, yes, more upgrades required. Of that. But that's all finding problems for the, uh, that need to be solved in the future, rather than things that have already been fixed. <laughs> Mike had to upgrade his or modify his biological handling area over here. Uh, because there'd been a recipe change in one of the upgrades. So he needed to put in this greenhouse instead of an advanced chemical plant that was in here. Uh, and he also needed to bring in an input of fertilizer, which is this one down here coming from... Uh, oh, another station that's been cobbled in up here. So <laughs> rather than putting in another one on the top of here or over on the side of here, he decided it'd be just easier to put it in up here, which I I mean, I, I can't criticise that too much. It's sort of thing I do. And um, I've been routine in a few other places as well. But this is now working. It, it will eat up any vitamin land that's been brought in over here, turn it down, and, and bring it out out of the vitamin land extract, which we do use in at least some quantity uh, in, in various places around the uh, universe. This is the area that uses all of the inputs that come from Andrigan. And Andrigan is the uh, planet that Mike was trying to harvest absolutely everything from. We'll see how, let's have a look and see how that's going on. Um, so, uh, these vitamin land patches from here. So quite a lot of that has gone by the looks of it. This stone patch has shrunk down quite a bit. And I would expect the stone ones to shrink the most because we're always passing stone through into the train because that's the thing we want to get the most of through. Over here, oh, this one's nearly gone as well. This vitamin land patch is nearly depleted. And I think there was, was there at one point a, oh yes, there's a cryonite patch here that looks pretty, uh, we're down to 1700, so that's going quite well. And there's a uranium patch up here, down to 11,000. So, so yeah, these patches you put in, they're definitely shrinking. We are using these supplies up at a rate it's not a particularly fast rate. This stone patch over here is sort of 7 million in it. Uh, that cryonite one's gone down nicely. These two are still fairly healthy. And there's still a lot of other resources around the uh, around the planetoid that he's not touched yet. So I think my suspicions early on, there was no chance that we would get through everything on this planet were well founded. Uh, I, I think maybe if we hadn't been bringing stone away from here from the core mining, maybe if we'd just been pulling up stuff at random from the planet and shipping it all out, maybe then we'd have been able to get rid of all of it. But because we've got because we're prioritizing the stone and a lot of stone is coming from core mining. That means that the system over on Norvis will carry on working because the whole point of this was to be a supply of stone. However, it does mean that our objective of completely uh, resource strip the entire planet is not going quite as well as it maybe. 
still, the factory is going, it's still quite bad. On Kothar, the Iridium production stopped, and we discovered previously that that was because we'd run out of enriched vulcanite, uh, which was unfortunate, so um, Mike has upped the, the uh, amount that's being requested over here. Uh, that might cause some issues with the uh, problems we're seeing on Agnea just now, however, hopefully that's not the actual cause of uh, stopping here. No, this is not the cause of stopping here, because we've got plenty of enriched vulcanite coming through here. It looks to me at a glance, the problem is probably a shortage of actual vulcanite that will be coming in here and then being passed out on these belts coming over to here to be made into the, the red beads that are now not being fed down here because there aren't any of them and therefore aren't going into uh, whichever s stage of production it is that uses them um, this stage so so yes you can see we've got full inputs coming in here we've just not got the red bead being brought in so that's why this is stopped and so for once all of mike's problems seems to be down to uh, my my, my um, planet's problems rather than the other way around which makes a bit of a change a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that the uh, sulfur or sulfuric acid, no, the sulfur production was struggling due to a shortage of water. And so Mark has put in some additional pumping stations across the top of here, to pull, uh, well, an additional pumping station across the top here, to pull more water out of this lake and pump it into the, into the ducts here. It can then be fed down to keep everything happy. And this now does seem to be fine. All these ducts are uh, in a row, I mean full. And so that seems, seems to be keeping up quite nicely. Everything is running running very well. Granted, we do have, nothing is actually trying to, trying to run at the moment because we seem to have enough sulphur, but I'm confident this will mean we'll now have plenty of water available. We should be able to keep these completely full, completely happy, and keep the supply running as we would like to, even if we have a massive uh, request of uh, huge amounts of sulphur. But I don't think we're going to get as much sulphur being requested, because if we look up at this area here where we're making the heat shield tiles with the old recipe, you can see that this is now filled up completely. This stopped running. It's got all of the uh, resources here that it wants. And so we're not pulling sulfur in here because we're not using this anymore except as an emergency backup. Because as I told you before, we, we're now using the better, more modern uh, heat shield tile production recipe. And so we don't need we don't need this area to run anymore. We've just left it here because partly because it's too much effort to pull it up when it's got this much resource in, in it. Uh, but mostly because this way we've got an emergency backup in case we ever run out of it in, in the other area. Perhaps because the iridium failed due to it not being fed enough vulcanite or something. Now let's take a look at the science. Well, we uh, finally finished mining products in 13. It's been on the go for probably about a month, I think. Uh, this is partly because it requires an enormous amount of science pack to go into it. But it's also because we had some issues with making the, particularly the advanced science pack. And I think we had some shortage of biological science pack at one point as well. And I think there may even been some issues with the deep space science pack. So, so basically all, most of the things that are required for this one had struggled in one way or another at some point. We finally got that one finished. That means we can produce each time a mining drill runs, it will produce slightly more of whatever its output is than it did previously. So we get an extra 10% boost. And that's an additive, not multiplicative. So it's actually going to be a relatively small boost, but it's still nice to have. And we made a start on long range star mapping 23, uh, which finished your, during the recording of the videos, which is why I'm looking at 24. So we did another one of those. That will have found us another uh, constellation somewhere in the sky, giving us a name and coordinates for it. So that's nice. Uh, <laughs> We don't really need that quite so much anymore now, but you know, it, it was something that seemed worth doing. One of the other things we were considering is perhaps doing some more form safety research, because they're fairly easy, they don't require anything particularly expensive, and we do seem to have had some bots crashing recently, so it'd be nice to pick up a couple more of those. However, we are sort of beyond the point of needing massive bot swarms now, because we aren't building out in absolutely enormous solar arrays anywhere, so we should be okay even without it. But it might be worth doing another couple of steps of it anyway, just, just in case. And so this is the end of the video. My apologies once again for the uh, massive screw up with the uh, audio recording throughout most of the second half of that. Um, as you can probably tell, I've worked out what caused it. I know, know exactly how not to do it again, uh, but I didn't really want to re-record the whole thing because it would it would it would change the feel of the video quite a lot. And maybe I'm a little bit lazy. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far through all of the uh, the slightly dubious audio, uh, we'll be back tomorrow on Monday with a, another Factorio K2SE stream where we will um, get quite close to finishing. I hope. Uh, then I'll be back on Wednesday with another Satisfactory stream, where again I'm sort of on the home straight, so I'm going to be needing to look for some more games and more mod packs, more, more stuff to play fairly soon, which is going to be interesting. And then of course I'll be back again at the weekend with the usual catch-up videos. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.